Have you ever been so overwhelmed with life that you said, Lord, something's got to give? I came to that point in my life, and when I cried out to him, God immediately replied, give me 40 days. Those words became a revelation that changed my life forever. Hello, I'm Frida Bowers, and I invite you to join me on a journey as I share with you how the Lord answered my cry. God turned everything around for me, and I'll show you how He'll do the same for you. Come with me, and I'll take you on a grand and delightful 40-day encounter with the Lord, beginning right now. Super Channel presents Give Me 40 Days with Frida Bowers. Hello, and thank you for joining me on day 25. Today our topic is be angry and sin not. I'm going to ask our special guests to introduce themselves, and then we'll get right into today's devotional. Hello and welcome. Thank you for having us. I'm yes. Pastor Alex with the River Orlando Church. And I'm Pastor Lauren Burgos, and it's such a pleasure to be with you today. So thank you for having us. Yes, we're just so grateful that you're with us. This is going to be a, an interesting show, but it's going to be a great show. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have your own book, please turn with me to page 138. If you don't have your own 40-day journal, ordering information is on the screen. Today's key scripture is Ephesians Four, chapter 4, verses 26 and 27. And it reads like this, Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Pastor Lauren, is anger a sin according to the Bible? Well, the short answer I would say is no, because we can read right here from this verse where it says, Be angry. So the Bible says be angry but sin not. So you can be angry and not sin, or you can be angry and sin. So it depends on where that anger takes you, what you yield to with that anger. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Pastor, what would you say, uh, what is, what, when you think of anger, what do you really, what comes to your heart? when you really just think of the word anger. And I know, like she said, there's many different lanes you can, you can go to, but just share with us the first thing that comes to your heart. Well, I think, uh, you know, when we're talking about anger, it's always, mm -hmm. obviously always looked at in a negative context, but we see in the Bible that even Jesus got, he got angry, and even God, had, um, you mm -hmm. know, got angry at his own creation, mm -hmm. and he is righteous in doing it. So I think um, really it's the motive of the anger, right. mm -hmm. really, um, that, that, that we need to look at. But I think it's always obviously looked at in a negative context, but I think there's a righteous anger where we can stand up for righteousness, mm -hmm. where we're looking at injustice and things like that. Yes, yes. I'm going to read the first paragraph that's in our book today. On page 138, it says, Strife is a struggle for victory. Have you ever been in a home or place or office and you knew there was something not right and it was, it was strife, but you couldn't, well, you just wasn't sure what it was called? Well, strife is a struggle for victory. Mm -hmm. When conflict on contentions arises in your life, you focus, your focus should not be on whether you are right, but that God is right. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we think we're right. Yep. And we may be right, but it may not be in the same place that what God is thinking of. And so we, I think this is just really precious. It goes back to, but what God is right. His purpose must always be a primary in your life. Strife is it's going to be. So just share with us what you're thinking about when you think about people or, or times that there has been strife that you have encountered or maybe seen or whatever. What, how, what was your, um, <laughs> what would you think about? What was your mentality on that? Well, I think a lot of strife comes from people always wanting to be right. You know, and I, and I really <laughs> like the, how you wrote it there because it's absolutely a lot of times when we find ourselves arguing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or giving room for the enemy is because people dig in their heels and they're trying to be right. 
And, and, and really the next, actually the next uh, sentence to that says, his purpose must always be a priority for your life. And I think a lot of times we lose purpose of what we're talking about, you know, or where the contention is or where the conflict is. We lose the purpose of it and people dig in and, and become stubborn because they want to be right. So I think purpose is the key to, to, to getting strife out. It's like, you know, a lot of times, you know, people are like, they're arguing and they argue and they argue and argue and argue and then they forget what they're even talking about. Yes. The original argument. Yes. Because there's no purpose, you know? So I think a lot of times if we take a step back and we sober up, take a deep breath and say, what is the purpose? Why do I have to be right? You know, and when we get over trying to be right and we find purpose in tr trying to find a solution, I think that's when, you know, people can humble themselves to, you know, resolve a conflict. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Lauren? I would say too, back to your original question, you know, is, is it wrong to be angry? You know, the Bible says that like anger comes, we can't always avoid conflict, mm -hmm. you know, and it's okay to feel angry, but mm -hmm. it's what you do with that anger mm -hmm. when it comes, you know, are you yielding to a spirit of anger that's going to lead you to sin, that's going to open the door to strife in your relationships and your marriage, or are you going to shut mm -hmm. the door to that sin and take that anger and know how to, you know, handle it in a godly way? So, you know, being angry is not a sin. It's what you do with the anger. Yes. Yes. And, you know, is it going to cause division? If it's going to cause division, then you know, you know, that's obviously not the will of God. But if you can come to a place where you can control your feelings, control your emotions, and make sure you yield to peace, make sure you yield to forgiveness, make sure you yield to love, then that's when you can, you know, find that purpose and truly care more about the other person right. who's involved in that conflict rather than just having your own right or having your own way come across. Yeah. Yes, I remember a lady, there was something going on, I think it's when we first started the ministry. I will never forget this. And um, there was conflict going back and forth. And um, I had not experienced that much. I think we had only been in the ministry like five years. Wow. And But what I realized, so there was another lady in there and, there and she was hearing all of this. All of a sudden she just got up and she went to the bathroom. She said, excuse me, I'm going to the bathroom. Well, we all thought, of course, she's going to the bathroom to use the bathroom. <laughs> she went in there and she came out. Things were changed. Wow. She went in there and she spoke death to the work and stuff and things that was going on mm -hmm. without yeah. even saying anything to them. Because, see, it's a spirit. That's yes. right. Spirit strength. Absolutely. See, well, it's yeah, a manifestation of a spirit. I think, mm -hmm. I think, what is it? I'll have to get my binding and loosen book. But when people get angry, sometimes they don't want to give up. Like you say, they want to show that they are well, on top, or they're telling the truth, or whatever it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and what happens is it becomes all about being right and wrong. Yes, you're right. And sometimes you could be absolutely right and be wrong in the way you go about it. Mm -hmm. You know, and one of the things that, you know, even in our marriage that's helped us so much is that we've eliminated that whole thing about who's right and wrong. It's mm -hmm. not about right and wrong, it's about principle, mm -hmm. you know. So we, you know, and I think if we do that, if we, if we stick to God's word and his principles and the fruit of the spirit, mm -hmm. and we allow that to, mm -hmm. to, to be the, the primary focus, I think we, you know, people can come in agreement, mm -hmm. you know, a lot more. And, and, and I would like to actually also speak to the men because when we're dealing with anger, a lot of times it's the man that allows, sometimes we allow our testosterone to get the best of us. And I think as the, as the priest of the home and as the man, we really need to re you know, reel that in and make sure we have a, a check in on that because if we don't, I believe if the man allows his anger to boil over in the home mm. and he is not a good example of that, then the home is gonna be a mess. It will be. So, so I really see that as the man of the house and if you're a, a husband and you have a family, I wanna speak to you today and tell you, as a man of the house, as a priest of the house, mm -hmm. we don't only have the authority mm -hmm. but we have the responsibility to make sure that we run our homes in a godly way and to keep that anger in check mm -hmm. so that strife will not prevail in the home. And a lot of times that accountability comes to us. Like mm -hmm. I, I believe that if the man can keep that in check and keep his tone a little down, mm -hmm. then things don't escalate. Because a lot of times you see the man will start talking and then you know everybody's trying to talk over each mm -hmm. other. So I think a lot of that is um, self-control, you know, which is very, very, very important. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Lauren? Well, you know, the enemy, like, he doesn't really have any new tricks. It's all, no. like, the same story, right? Yep. 
his goal is to divide and conquer. If he can divide you, then he can conquer mm -hmm. you. And so that's what he comes to do. And the Bible says that we have to be wise as serpents. We have to know the enemy's devices, know his strategies. Because if you know your enemy's devices, then you can stop him before he gets too far, right? You can stop yes, him before he causes right. any harm. So if we know the enemy is going to come to try to divide and conquer, we know the Bible says that, you know, the blessing is the commanded blessing. God's commanded blessing is at the place of unity. So if we know the enemy is coming to divide us and coming to destroy that unity, coming to prevent God's precious commanded blessing from operating in our life, then we will be, you know, smart enough to like recognize it and to realize like, hey, I'm not, we're not on opposite teams here. It's not me against you. It's us against the enemy. And stop seeing your brother, your sister in Christ, or, you know, even your family member or your husband or your wife or whoever it is that you're, you tend to be in conflict mm -hmm. with, stop seeing them as the enemy and see the enemy as the enemy That's right. and see that he's coming to try to divide you so that he can conquer you. And it's like, man, if I know that that's what the enemy's trying to do, if I know that he's trying to mm -hmm. conquer me, yeah. why would I yield? Why would I give the enemy any place in my life to come that's destroy right. my home, destroy my family, mm -hmm. destroy what we've been busy building with God. You know, we've been busy building this, this, this kingdom and this house for God and this work for God, whatever it is that you're building, you know, why would you ever let an enemy willingly, knowingly come in and destroy that? But every time you open the door to strife mm. and you let that anger lead you into strife, then mm -hmm. you're just letting him come and, and make a mess of, you know, what God is busy trying to build in your life. So, you know, I think really it has so much to do with identifying who your enemy is mm -hmm. and knowing that it's not the person right. that you're mm -hmm. dealing with. It's actually the enemy. <clears throat> Satan is the enemy and you can defeat him with the word of God. Mm -hmm. So uh, husbands, fathers, men of God, you know, a woman, she would love to have someone that she knew that really loved her. The Bible says that yeah. she would honor him. I just really believe 99% of them would. Mm -hmm. If they knew that there was truly love in that home, like the Bible says, yeah. the man is to love the wife and the wife is to honor him. Yeah. Now, yeah, of course, you go still love him, but that was the main point is honoring him. Yes. And there's just something about strife that can absolutely split mm -hmm. a home apart. And then from then on, it's awful. Yeah. yeah. You can, heart, you can never get it back like mm -hmm. it should be. Mm -hmm. You might have good times, but there's just something you know, it's not righteous, and we know what it is. It's the yeah. enemy trying to do it, and we have yielded to him. Yeah. That's right. Pastor? You know, and I think what happens with a lot of men is they abuse their strength in the relationship without knowing it. You know, you know, God's made us strong as men, but not to domineer the wife. It's really to nurture, protect, and provide, you know? And when you, when you provide that security that a woman's looking for, and you play, and each one plays their role, you will have a healthy home. Mm -hmm. But really, it comes down to the man. You know, mm -hmm. and a lot of times as pastors, when we do a lot of marriage counseling, you know, it, it's funny, but nine times out of ten, this is, this is actually what happens. Um, the man will actually try to get with me before and kind of complain about the wife, you know. Be like, oh, I'm so glad we're meeting, you know. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, I just really need some help. And then, you know, what I do, what I always do is I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to get to it. And then when I come down and sit down, I bring the accountability because, you know, and I want to speak to the men out there. You know, God's given us backbone and strength to be the man. And what it means to be a man, it means to protect, to provide, and to be that man of God that sets the plumb line and the standard for the home. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, when uh, men come for counseling, you know, whatever is in the home is allowed in the home by the priest of the home. Mm -hmm. So we've got to take responsibility and accountability, you know, that God's made us the priest you know, the Lord has given you a special grace and anointing mm -hmm. to run your home mm -hmm. and the spiritual pulse and condition of your home is your responsibility as a man. It's almost mm -hmm. like, you know, we need to be inspecting that pulse, you know, of the home. What's going on in the home? If there's strife in the home, we have the authority to get it out. If there's fear in the home, we have authority to get it out. You know, so God has given us a supernatural grace and wisdom as men to be leaders in the home. And, and I'm glad that you said that because when we take our righteous position, everything just seems to fall into place. Mm -hmm. Because women are naturally submissive. It's like what you said. Women mm -hmm. will, will naturally you know, submit and, and come up under a man when they know that they're loved. And, and I find that to be the case. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you don't see that is because like what you said, 
you know, sometimes, you know, the wife, you know, a lot of times they, they had a, a bad father, so they have daddy issues going into the relationship where there's abuse and things like that. And those things need to be healed up. Yes. You know, so yes. that, so that, you know, the relationship can function properly. But, but, but you do have, you do see it that when somebody grows up in a home, whether it's role modeled effectively, mm -hmm. the relationships are healthier. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's an awesome thing. Yes. Ms. Lauren. Well, I love what you actually have in the book here where it says that you cannot allow strife in your home and you don't have, you have a choice. That anger is a choice, you right. know, and that, you know, we have, to, we have to choose to not be angry. You yes. know, we have to choose to not to yield to that. And that it has to become such a, such a priority in our life that we refuse to allow a spirit of anger. We refuse to allow strife in because if we do, it can actually hinder our relationship from God. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I believe it's Mark 11, the Bible says that before you go to pray, it says you need to go, if you have something wrong between you and your brother, you need to go to your brother and make things right and then come back to pray. Because it's like that strife that exists between you and your brother or you and whoever, that actually becomes a big wall between you and God. Right. So it's like, what, what in the <laughs> world could be worth it? What argument, what conflict, what thing, you know, could ever be worth it to bring a wedge between me and God? Like mm -hmm. there is nothing in this world that is, is worth that. Like there's nobody, there's no problem, there's nothing in this world that I'm not willing to get over, to humble myself, to do whatever I need to do to bring resolution, to make sure that there's nothing hindering me from God, nothing hindering me in my prayers before the Father. You know, like what, what could be more important than that? So, you know, I think if we really put into context a lot of, you know, the strife and the, um, you know, and anger and what it produces, like if you put, if you look in context and, and look in perspective and see how important it is to keep that pathway between your heart and God's heart open, then you realize how important it is to, you know, to not yield to anger and to not allow it to be part of your, your home and not allow it to fester. It's not to say that conflicts or things won't happen, that happens, mm -hmm. but it's what you do with it. If mm -hmm. you allow it, and again, mm -hmm. I love what you wrote mm -hmm. in this book, how you, mm -hmm. you, know, you should never let the sun go down yes. on your wrath. That's what the Bible mm -hmm. says. But there's another place, I believe it was in here, and it says that, you know, that don't let the day end in anger. You know, right. don't bring today's issues over into tomorrow. You know, put some humility on and just, yes. if you have to be the first one to apologize, apologize, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, we actually have a thing in our marriage now that we've established that it's almost like we try to beat each other to the apology. If an apology <laughs> needs to yeah. be said, it's almost I'm gonna like- i myself first. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a little competition we have to say, yeah. who's gonna like, you know, yeah. bite the bullet and humble themselves first, you and know? And we know the other one's doing it, so like, if she humbles herself <laughs> first, I'm like, man, I should have humbled myself first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, but it, it's good. It's really good because, and really, what's helped us is, is like that whole thing we talked about. It's not about who's right and wrong. Yeah, it's right. about the principle. Like, what are we talking about? Let's yeah. bring, let's let's come to a solution. Yes. You know? And are we going to allow this, you know, conflict yes. or whatever to, you know, to separate us from God? I never want to be in a place where God can't hear my prayers that's because right. I've got something in my heart towards someone else. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's right. never worth it. So, you know, <laughs> humble yourselves. Be the first one, right? Be the bigger person. You know, whenever you were trying to say that you wanted to be the first and all that, and y'all were going back and forth, yeah. you know what, it, what came to my mind or came to my throat really, just here on the, on the set? You both were just laughing yeah. because we, <laughs> each one wanted to, <clears throat> yeah. to, to, to let you know, I really love you so much. Yeah. You know, I'll... Just, just please forgive me, yeah. whether you did it or not. Exactly. Right. Who and cares what happened? Yeah, I know exactly. it. Yeah. And I have seen people do that. Yeah. And I would know the truth. Yes. And I thought, my, they're strong. Mm -hmm. That is being strong in God. Mm -hmm. I've heard them over these years, not many times, but I knew in my heart who was wrong. But the other one, the father, a lot of times would come and actually say, you know what? I'm, going, I'm just going to repent. Maybe I didn't do it right or something like that. When mm -hmm. really it was the wife on that time. That's right. And in that, though, it just put such a... So good. Yes. The, 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 the tide, because she, in her heart, she knew. But she, and she realized what was going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she didn't say anything. But it drew them actually closer together. That's because right. he forgave her immediately. Yes. It was so good yes. that it was so touching. Yes. Yeah. You know, so she was not going... 
stay in anger, even right. though she was. Right. But when he said, no, you know what? I probably did something that was not right for you, baby. And put his arm around her. You know, there's just something there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Just even that touch. Yes. Because yeah. <laughs> what happens is when somebody makes themselves vulnerable, right? And then the other one um, takes advantage of that vulnerability, then both begin to protect their heart. Mm-hmm. And so that's when people get um, prideful and bitter in a relationship yes. is because they feel like they have to protect their heart. And so they got to fight back. But when both parties begin to become completely vulnerable, then that, mm-hmm. out of that vulnerability comes a lot of unity mm-hmm. and it comes trust, trust be- yeah. because it's like, oh, who, who cares what happened? I don't even care if I'm right. Yeah. I'm just going to put myself completely out there and tell you, listen, honey, I love you. It's all good. You know, mm-hmm. yes. and when you do that, especially as a man and you lead with that in the home, I'm just telling you right now, mm-hmm. a lot of times people complain about the woman being emotional and, you know, all this stuff and that. But, you know, the Bible says that the woman is the weaker vessel. It means that, you know, a lot of times emotionally she is weaker and we are stronger and we can't use our, sh- our strength to abuse that. And we need to nurture that and protect that. So a lot of times in an argument, if you become stubborn, She's just going to become even more stubborn. So I find that, that when the man leads with humility, the wife is like, oh, oh, thank God, because I really didn't want to fight. I didn't really want to go crazy, you know, but, but now I feel safe to humble myself mm-hmm. because he's humbling himself. Mm-hmm. And so you find that when you lead with humility, that humility that, you, that you're leading with will be found in your wife and, and her attitude will change and everything. It's amazing. Trust me. <laughs> You know, this is amazing. I know this is just a little, a little, just a little glip of something. But I remember how that sometimes my mother would get kind of aggravated at daddy or something. And really, he was he was not in, to blame. But and he would just love on her and, and go on. Did you know the next time they had a meal, he should have a big dessert? That's how I, it th- is. I know. Absolutely. I, I, I was thinking. Why would she do that? But see, in her heart, she knew that she was wrong. Mm. But my mother, for some reason, mm. didn't have the strength or the faith to repent or to apologize. Mm. But daddy never said a thing. My daddy never said a thing. He just enjoyed that cake or pie or whatever it was. <laughs> and you know. The peace offering. Yeah, the peace <laughs> offering. <laughs> That's what it is. That's exactly what That's it hilarious. is. A uh, peace offering. Uh, I know we've kind of gotten off, but I don't think we have gotten off. Oh, this, this is great. You know uh, what? We need to hear these yes. things. Yes. For us to you hear it. Right. I know we all go to church, but we're just being, we're just throwing out everything <laughs> on the table and just sharing our heart here, yep. yes. you know, and what God has for us. And I want to just tell you, maybe you've made mistakes. You know what? We all have. I've made many. I'm not going to count them, though. <laughs> but, you know, the biggest thing that we can do is to love someone. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I hear people say, oh, I love my car. I love the house. Oh, da, da, da. No. We're to enjoy that. We're all, there's only two things we're to love. That's God and people. Amen. That's, That's right. the bottom line. Let me tell you this. Enjoy the others. Mm-hmm. But if you'll do the loving that, that it should be, mm-hmm. there's something amazing that can get your, your own life in, in order to be more what God has called you to be. Mm-hmm. That's Amen. right. That's right. I mean, it's leading with love. Like you said, you know, when, when you lead with love, and that other person knows that you have their best interests mm-hmm. and that you have their heart, mm-hmm. guess what they're going to do? Mm-hmm. They're going to open up their heart because mm-hmm. everybody wants to be loved and yes. accepted. That's right. Everybody wants to be affirmed. Yes. You know, so everybody's looking for that. So I, I find it that when you lead with love, mm-hmm. it, it, it really changes everything. It, it really does. I mean, it's, it's the recipe. Is a recipe. I just wanted to read this, if I may. It's, yes. It's 1 Corinthians 13, a chapter we're all very, you know, uh, familiar with. But it says, love, God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it's not self-seeking. It's not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it, and it pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Mm. I mean, I feel like if we could read that every day, it would kind of like... Give us just a front end alignment for our, our life and yes. for our relationships. And, yes. you know, in this kind of love, it's supernatural love. It's, this is the love that the work of the Holy Spirit does yes. in us. Selfless. You know, it's selfless. It puts the needs and the interests 
Mm -hmm. and the desires of the other person before our own. And, you know, a lot of people, I believe they struggle with anger because they haven't allowed the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to produce this kind of love in them. You can have a natural love, but we know this kind of love is unconditional and it's supernatural and it can only be produced by the Holy Spirit in your life. So if you try to hold yourself to the standard of the Word of God without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, mm -mm. which is what this whole book is about, about encountering mm. God, mm -hmm. having that encounter with the Holy Spirit. If you try mm -hmm. to hold yourself to the standard of God's word without that empowerment, you're gonna fail. That's but if right. you have that encounter with God and you let him do that work on the inside of you, he will start to produce this supernatural, unconditional love. And it will empower you to love people yes. who are unloving towards you. It'll empower you to, you know, look beyond someone's fault, look beyond someone's, you know, failure or the wrongs that they've done to you and truly love them even when they don't deserve it. That's right. Now that's true love. Yes. <laughs> when they don't deserve it. But you know what? That's what Jesus did for us. Absolutely. We didn't deserve it. Absolutely. But he gave his life. Mm -hmm. That's right. It is so precious. It is just so precious. Yes. Let's read our quote today. Yes. Pastor, I'm going to ask you to read this one. It starts off with the second word is man. I don't know why I wanted him to read it before I saw it, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no man ever prayed heartily without learning something. Mm. And that is Ralph Waldo Emerson. Now, you know, this is not just for men. It is mankind. Yes. All of these, That's right. all of these little quotes here. No man ever prayed heartily without learning something. So, mm -hmm. so if you're in a place that you've had some challenges and there has been some conflict and some anger in your home, just get with the Lord just by yourself and just talk to him. He will give you peace, and He will tell you what to do. And I encourage you to take a, a tablet or a paper and pen and just write down. Ask Him one question, and then wait on Him to answer. Don't ask Him three questions, mm -hmm. and then try to ex get the answer and not know which one is going to fit. Mm. But just talk to the Lord. Just spend, you know, you might say, Miss Fred, I don't have the time. Let me ask you this. Do you have five minutes? Mm -hmm. If you have five minutes, I want to encourage you to do that. Oh, it's a joy that you're with us today. It's been so good. It's been so yeah. good. Thank you, both of you, for coming and being with us on this show. I tell you, it was just a hit. <laughs> Talking about anger and then going f further into love. This was perfect. This was just beautiful. I invite you to join me tomorrow for another encounter with God on Give Me 40 Days. And remember... Prayer is more important. Join Frida Bowers, Super Channel program host and author for the Give Me 40 Days program series, which will broadcast every day for the first 40 days of the new year here on Super Channel. We encourage you to get your own book and join Frida as she and her guests cover one chapter every day for 40 days. Join Freedom Hours every day on the Give Me 40 Days program series through early February here on Super Channel. Frida and her special guest tomorrow will inspire you as they discuss another short chapter in the 40 Days series. You can now order Frida's Give Me 40 Days book and join along on this 40-day journey, which began January 1st. It's your invitation for an encounter with God. Get your book and see what God can do for you in early 2022.